Hello, autoimmune warriors. I'm Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'm going to talk about thyroid blood test basics, which means I'm going to focus on the thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, as well as the thyroid hormones. In a different video, I'll focus on the different thyroid antibodies. So the other day, one of my patients got a blood test done where the doctor only tested the TSH, and then another patient got results that only showed the TSH and the free T4. But whenever you get a thyroid panel, if at all possible, you want to test for both the TSH and thyroid hormones, both thyroid hormones, not just T4, and again, not just the TSH, but ideally the TSH and both thyroid hormones. And of course, you do want to test the antibodies, but we're just focusing on thyroid basics here. Now, speaking of testing, the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions better understand the test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So I mentioned before how at the very least you want to test for the TSH and both thyroid hormone levels. Once again, I, I do test for antibodies, not only initially, but do follow-up testing for antibodies to make sure they're decreasing. But in this video, I'm focusing on thyroid panel basics. So I'm just going to really focus on TSH, free T3, free T4. And some medical doctors will tell their patients that it's not necessary to test for the T3. So they'll just test for the TSH and free T4. And I mentioned some doctors just test for the TSH, but there are many doctors will test TSH and T4, but not T3. So why test for the T3? Well, many patients have normal T4 levels and low T3 levels. So it's common to have what's called a conversion problem where someone is having a problem converting T4 into T3. And so if you're, you just test for the TSH and the T4, but you don't look at T3, then you can't pick up that conversion problem. And also keep in mind that T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So you really do want to get a picture of the, both thyroid hormone levels along with the TSH. So speak about the TSH, why do some medical doctors only test for the TSH, only test for the thyroid stimulating hormone? Well, many medical doctors only use the TSH when it comes to their recommendations, which for those with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, typically it's recommending thyroid hormone replacement, and they usually don't pay attention to thyroid hormone levels, as crazy as that might sound. They're just going to base their recommendations on the TSH. So if the TSH is looking good, then they'll keep the thyroid hormone the same. If the TSH gets higher, then they'll increase the amount of thyroid hormone. And for some of what hyperthyroidism, many times you will see endocrinologists also test for the T3 and T4. But if one of their patients is taking antithyroid medication, oftentimes they won't change the dose of antithyroid medication if the person, or at least they won't decrease the dose of antithyroid medication if the TSH remains the same. See, the problem with hyperthyroidism, mo most cases of Graves' disease, is that the TSH is undetectable. So if someone's on antithyroid medication and the TSH stays the same, then it, there's a few problems. So one, the thyroid hormone levels could always increase but if the TSH is already undetectable, then, then again, it's not going to change. But even when thyroid hormone levels are improving, the TSH usually takes a while to increase. Now, to be fair, some endocrinologists, it doesn't make a difference what the thyroid hormone levels are doing in the eyes of some endocrinologists, as many of them won't decrease the antithyroid medication dose until the TSH starts increasing in those with hyperthyroidism. So for these reasons, this is why some endocrinologists only test for the TSH. So when it comes to testing the thyroid hormone levels, some medical doctors will test the total T3 and total T4. In my practice, I prefer looking at the free form of the hormones. So with the total hormones, total T3, total T4, most thyroid hormone is bound to a protein and transported throughout the bloodstream. And it's okay to test the T4 and T3 and also test for the free T3 and free T4. But if you're going to choose one, I prefer looking at the free form of the thyroid hormone. So I usually will test for free T3 and free T4 in my practice. And again, you also want to test for the thyroid antibodies, which I discuss in a different video. 
So even though I'm going to focus on thyroid antibodies in a different video, I do want to mention that when someone is initially diagnosed with a thyroid condition, whether it's hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, usually the initial doctor, usually it's a primary care physician, won't order a test for thyroid antibodies. Usually they'll refer the patient to an endocrinologist, and the endocrinologist is the one who will order the thyroid antibodies. And this was the case with me, as when I was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, I went to a primary care physician who was the one who diagnosed me with hyperthyroidism, and he did not recommend or he did not order thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins to see if I had Graves' disease. And so speaking of trying, as far as differentiating the different conditions, of course, hypothyroidism is characterized by elevated thyroid stimulating hormone or elevated TSH and low T3 or T4, although a lot of people with Hashimoto's have subclinical hypothyroidism, meaning that they have elevated TSH and T3 and T4 within the lab range, but usually outside of the optimal range, so, so less than optimal. And then with Graves' disease, typically you're going to have depressed or many times undetectable TSH, and T3 and T4 are usually elevated. And with Hashimoto's also, I should mention, you're usually going to have either thyroglobulin antibodies elevated or anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies elevator, or both of these, Graves' disease. Usually, in, a, in addition to hyperthyroidism, you're gonna have elevated thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins. Although I do see people with all three antibodies at times. Um, there are some people with Graves' disease, for example, that not only have thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, but also elevated anti-thyroglobulin antibodies and anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies. And then another marker, that I test for is reverse T3, at least with my hypothyroid patients. Not so much. In the past, I did it more with my hyperthyroid patients, but most hyperthyroid patients are going to be elevated due to the hyperthyroidism. But in someone with hypothyroidism, if they have elevated reverse T3, that could indicate a problem with the conversion of T4 to T3. And I'll dedicate a separate video where I talk about reverse T3. So be on the lookout for the next few videos where I will focus on the different thyroid markers. If you like this video, please click on the like button below and I'll catch on the next video.